welcome back to Tony's tutorial and today we have top 30 biomechanics MCQ questions from thorax and chest wall we had our discussion on the hip complex biomechanics and now we have discussion on thorax and chest wall since it is biomechanics MCQ the answers are arranged at the end of 30 questions along with a brief description and while attempting the question I would request you to take a paper and note down your answers so that you can check back at the end of this session.
Yes, now it is time to see the answers. Along with answers, we have a brief description. What is the normal value of angle of Lewis? The correct answer is option C, which is 160 degree. And you know that angle of Lewis is an important landmark in sternum. It is an angle between the manubrium and the body of the sternum, right? In between the manubrium and the body of sternum, you have the angle of Lewis, which is also known as sternal angle. Sometimes they may ask you in this way. So see the diagram in this, you can see that sternal angle is clearly marked. And this is palpable as a second, uh, as a ridge in the uh, near the second rib. So this helps in the identification of the attachment of second rib balls. Next question, identify the ribs known as the vertebrosternal ribs. The correct answer is first one to seventh rib. Vertebrosternal means the ribs are attached to vertebral vertebras as well as sternum. All the ribs are attached to the vertebra, but only these ribs are continued directly attached to the sternum. And the third question is uh, about the incorrect statement in that uh, none of the above, all the statements are true, which you will see in the coming diagram where you know that the ribs are classified into true ribs, floor, false ribs and floating ribs. Floating ribs are 11th and 12th ribs. See the diagram in this, it is shown. The floating ribs are shown 11th and 12th one. The floating ribs are known as vertebral ribs. So they may ask you in that manner. The um, uh, false ribs are known as vertebrochondral ribs. And the other one is vertebral ribs. And the fourth question, identify incorrect statement regarding ventilatory muscles. You can read down the, the answers, but uh, the incorrect answer here is, is the contraction is episodical because the contraction in our ventilatory muscle is not episodical. It is a rhythmic contraction and it is throughout our lifetime and it is sustaining our lives. And the next question is the primary muscle of ventilation are of course, many of you will think it is diaphragm alone, but no, diaphragm, intercostal and scalene muscle, all these three muscles are primary muscles of respiration. Next question, approximate percentage of respiration contributed by the diaphragm. It's a direct answer, 70 to 80 percentage of the respiration is contributed by diaphragm. The origin of costal fibers of the diaphragm. You know that the costal fibers and crural fibers. The costal fibers are arising from Seifert process, lower six ribs, and costal cartilage of lower six ribs. So that's all of the above. This is the correct answer. Incorrect statement regarding diaphragm, which is that all fibers of diaphragm intersect at the central tendon. This is very sure that uh, diaphragm has a central tendon. It is a boomerang shaped one. It has no bony insertion. The central tendon has no bony insertion. The shape of the central tendon or this uh, diaphragm is dome shape. The incorrect one is the last one. The origin of the diaphragm is from L1, L2 and L3. Actually, the shape of the central tendon is boomerang shape. That was a slight error. Sorry for that. And the origin, as I told you, is from L1, L2, L3 and medial and lateral arcuate ligament. You should always remember about the vertebral origin of diaphragm. You know that the right and left crust is the origin from the vertebral bodies. The functional unit of diaphragm formed by lower ribs is known as. So you know that in lower ribs there is a functional unit of the diaphragm and that is known as the zone of opposition. That is known as the zone of opposition which is very important functionally because this is one that is helping in respiration. What happens is that the zone of contracts and it pulls the diaphragm downwards. The plane and axis on which bucket handle movement occurs. What is bucket handle movement? It increases the lateral diameter. If it increases the lateral diameter, it should be like abduction or action. That is in frontal plane, so axis would be AP axis. Origin of scalene muscle, which is a direct question in C3, C2, C7 vertebra, that is a transverse process. Why scalene is important here? It is a primary muscle of respiration and it, lifts in and it helps in lifting the first and second rib, which helps in AP diameter increase. Identify the correct statement regarding the pump handle movement. Pump handle movement do increase the AP diameter. It takes place in the sagittal plane. Sagittal plane motion is pump handle and other one is uh, what you call in the frontal plane movement. Here you can see the diagram. How, why it is called a pump handle movement? It is actually increasing. It is actually increasing the AP diameter, whereas the bucket handle movement increases the transverse diameter. Always remember that. It's very important. 
and when we move on to the next question which is all, all about the compliance which is actually the inverse of stiffness right it is inverse of stiffness that means it is indirectly referring to the flexibility this is very important because this is important in case of infants and in adults the compliance of the chest wall because it is helping in the movements and the answer was option a itself correct one identify the ribs that are attached fully to manubrium sternum this may be a tricky one the ribs that is attaching completely to the manubrium sternum the first rib only is the answer because second rib is only attached through a dummy facet half of is it, it is only attached half is it in the uh, manubrium and half is in the body okay which of the following ribs have an indirect attachment to sternum by attaching their costal cartilage to one another that is the um, the answer is vertebro contral ribs because these are the eight nine and ten ribs these ribs are attached in such a way that uh, they get attached their costal cartilage get attached to the correspond uh, above vertebras the costal cartilage and that is why they are attached to the sternum how many pairs of ribs actually attach slowly to the seafood process this is again tricky that is zero because um, there is no complete attachment to the seafood process you can see in the diagram only a um, dummy facet of the rib is attached to the seafood process so completely no rib is attached to the seafood process now we are going to see about the sternocleidomastoid here what is important is all the muscles that are attached to our thorax has a role in actually helping in respiration so sternocleidomastoid is one such muscle it helps in increasing the epidiameter it helps in increasing the pump handle movement because both these are related I, we discussed earlier and it helps in the maximal in maximal inhalation period it is active in the end stage of maximal inhalation period so that's option e and the next one is about the internal intercostal muscle this is one of the uh, most trickiest question in this session the internal and external intercostal muscle the direction of fibers you have to remember the internal intercostal muscles they arise from the inner surface of 1 to 11 ribs and they passes caudally and posteriorly whereas external intercostal muscle arise from caudally and anteriorly or opposite direction right the anterior one is anterior one is a posterior and internal intercostal muscle arises at the chondrosternal junction that is anterior and moves up to the angle of ribs whereas the other one arises from posterior tubercle of the ribs and comes anteriorly so this one moves uh, posteriorly other one comes anteriorly that is the difference identify correct statement regarding the parasternal muscles so what are parasternal muscles means the parasternal muscles are actually intercostal muscles which are present between chondrosternal to costochondral junction that is there is a junction that is a chondrosternal junction to costochondral junction so in this junction there is no muscles no internal costal muscles are present that intercostal muscles which are present in this junction is known as the parasternal muscle in the next question 20th one leads about the subcostal muscles and this is and all the statements are correct they are intercostal muscles subcostal the only difference is that uh, the intercostal muscles actually attached to the lower ribs but this one may span one or rib, two ribs and attach to the next rib maybe they may be attaching to the third rib starts from the third one and may insert in the sixth one that's the difference the um, 21 one that is the root value of a um, phrenic nerve which supplies the diaphragm which is a correct answer you know that the answer and the next question the pick out the muscles among which having a role of least role of accessory muscle this is of course important you must remember all these muscles are attached to the thorax and some are the abdominal muscle they are having role in chest wall but uh, this one uh, the posterior superior uh, serratus posterior superior and posterior inferior in the latest study shows that they have no role in this um, inhalation you should remember that and the th 23rd question is about um, chest wall function in elderly this is quite important because as life progresses then uh, what do you call the chest wall goes uh, for degenerative changes fibrosis happens the first one is correct chest wall compliance is decreased that means flexibility is decreased airways narrows and uh, there is decrease in muscle fibers also muscle type also so all the above answers are correct the nerve supply of internal intercostal muscle this is uh, by the internal intercostal nerve itself not by the phrenic nerve not by the vagus nerve by by the intercostal nerve this is a direct answer question the average length capacity of an individual which is a six liters correct the um, next question we move on to the length capacity is actually which are important to study the sum of inspiratory reserve volume and tidal volume that is inspiratory capacity 
that is uh, you know that there are length capacities and length volume all of that are important you must uh, definitely prepare that for the exam point of view this is the answer is the inspiratory capacity normal value of expiratory reserve volume is uh, 700 to 1200 millimeter milliliter okay so 1700 to 1200 the option a is actually inspired to reserve volume and the last one is the tidal volume right and pick out the incorrect statement about body please mark the fee and the option is uh, option b which is um, it do not measure inspirator reserve volume it measures functional residual volume and always remember in uh, thorax we use the boyle's law which is a uh, uh, inverse relationship between pressure and volume not the pascal's law the joint that connects 7th to 10th ribs 7th to 10th ribs are known as false ribs okay and that false ribs are connected by costal cartilage are connected each other therefore that co um, connection is known as intercontra joint between costal cartilages that is intercontra joint the last question is about the chest wall in infants like a chest wall in elderly chest wall in infants also cho shows the changes the first one is correct one chest wall is cartilaginous in shape the second one is about the decreased compliance actually uh, what happens in infants is the compliance of the chest wall is very high that is what helps the infants to pass through them birth canal and the rib cage is horizontal that is correct uh, rib cage is um, horizontal in infants only 20 percentage of five diaphragm fibers fatigue and this is also correct and the ribcage is horizontal this is seen, seen, seen in the diagram you can see that and uh, once the child starts growing the ribcage becomes uh, it's a normal shape so these are the changes in uh, infants so the thorax and chest wall we have co tried to cover almost all the questions thank you for attending the mcq and if you really enjoy this one and if you feel it informative don't forget to subscribe our channel and we have an upcoming mcq on anatomy and next weekend we will have another mcq on an next interesting topic from the biomechanics itself thank you